What's up, everybody? Welcome to February week two of the Poncho Show. As always, we're going to start you off with some world news. So, uh, last weekend was the Super Bowl, as you probably know. Probably heard a lot about it already, but we've got some fun facts for you. So, why don't you start them off? 1.3 billion chicken wings were consumed over the Super Bowl on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of chicken wings. Uh, 3.8 million pounds of popcorn was eaten. 19.4 million pounds of chips. 79 million pounds of avocados were eaten. Guess how many gallons of beer were drinking? 352 million gallons of that beer. Beer. So, more on the Super Bowl during sports. But we are going to continue with world news. So. Broncos won. Yep. <laughs> Spoiler alert. No, you don't, even, you don't even have to watch the rest of the show. Alrighty, now for some politics. Uh, Trump and Sanders hold the lead for the polls still. Uh, Bernie Sanders is just a little bit above Hillary Clinton there. So well, that's a pretty close race. That should be pretty interesting. And Trump is back on top. So there Trump, you go. He's doing pretty good in New Hampshire right now too. <laughs> GoPro is having to lay off some of their employees due to losing sales and dropping in stocks because <laughs> their stuff is just too expensive. Yeah, they're in a financial tailspin. So hopefully they can come out of that all clean and uh, you know get back on their feet. We wish the best to you, GoPro. Last week was the uh, Chinese New Year, the Lunar New Year. Uh, this year is the Year of the Monkey, so uh, I don't know what that means. Yeah, I know what that means. That's right. where Mountain Dew got that commercial idea. Mm-hmm. All right. Scott Kelly announced that a flower bloomed on the International Space Station, mm-hmm. and now he's just having his own little personal garden up there. Yeah. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, you heard about it a couple weeks ago. That there was a flower up there, and now it's just starting to bloom. So, yeah, that's pretty neat. First flower in space, I think. So, yep, pretty cool. Yep. All right, everybody, now that you heard some world news, now we're going to talk about some school news. So, snowball week is next week. Here's the dress-up days. Tuesday is going to be pajama day. Wednesday is patriotic day. Thursday is going to be twinning day, so dress up like uh, another person, the same. Yep. And Friday is going to be class color, and the class colors will be soon be announced. Mm -hmm. And on Friday, we are going to have a dodgeball tournament, and there's going to be a dance. And also on Tuesday, there's going to be a school-wide scavenger hunt. Yep, so that should be pretty fun. Look forward to it, everybody. Alrighty, there is no school on Monday, February 15th, due to President's Day, right? So there you go. And we are getting out early on Friday. Yep. Due to CPR training, right? CPR training. Youth business adventure info is available in Mrs. Hirsel's room. If you want to get into that, go ahead and do it. Uh, kindness Month continues, so make sure you uh, continue to spread that kindness. And I don't know. Really, you should be kindness all the time, not just yeah. this month, but who cares? All right. Thanks for tuning in for the news, and we'll see you next week. Story time, story time. Get ready for some story time with Abel. Story time with Abel. Today we'll be reading Muffy and Fluffy, the kids who didn't agree. Muffy and Fluffy are twins. This is Muffy. And this is Fluffy. Muffy and Fluffy look alike. They dress alike. They talk alike. They are twins. But Muffy and Fluffy do not think alike. If Muffy says yes, Fluffy says no. If Fluffy plays in, Muffy plays out. And if Muffy plays high, Fluffy plays low. If Fluffy plays up, Muffy plays down. The two kittens do not think alike, and it is not fun. We will play here, says Muffy. No, says Fluffy, we will play here. Here. No. Yes. Wait, says Fluffy. We will take turns. We will play here. The the twins play here. Then they play there. They play in and out. High and low. Up and down. This is fun, says Fluffy. Yes, says Muffy. This is fun. 
Now Muffy and Fluffy look alike. They dress alike. They talk alike. Sometimes the twins do not think alike. And sometimes they do. And that concludes story time. Here is your weather with Dawson and Joel. So it's, so, it's supposed to be really cold today, about 5 degrees or so, and then over the weekend it's going to start warming up, and then there's a chance of snow until about Tuesday, and it's going to be warm enough where it could actually be rain, freezing rain, make it kind of fun. Wednesday is supposed to be sunny, and then Thursday it's going to be cloudy again, so... This is your survival hack of the week. You get a pop bottle, chop it up, and you get a coffee filter with a rubber band. You put it in there. You get some sand and drop it in. Some tea rock. Get some even bigger rocks. Get some muddy water and you just dump it into it gets up to the rocks. This is after a day of filtering. It's pretty clear. <laughs> Survive again. Hello, welcome to the Poncho Shorts Sports Channel and Ty with the Rossel Sports right now. Girls lost to Hankinson on Monday. Girls lost at home to CGB on Tuesday in a 40 to 48 game. And fans there showed their support by dressing up in costumes because it's going to be their last home game as Raiders because they're co opting next year. Uh, Boys had a win Saturday against Wheaton, and boys and girls will play Waverly Thursday, and the boys will play uh, Warner on Friday. And now, Abel with NBA news. Well, the All-Star Weekend is coming up, and the dunk contest has four contestants, and Zach Levine will be defending his 
title from last year. He won. Uh, the contestants are Zach Levine from Minnesota, Aaron Gordon from the Magic, Will Barton from the Nuggets, and Andre Drummond from the Detroit Pistons. And then the three-point contest, and Stephen Curry is going to defend his title again this year. Uh, and the contestants are Stephen Curry, James Harden, Clay Thompson, Chris Middleton, Kyle Lowry, J.J. Redick, Chris Bosh, and Devin Brooker. And... That should be very interesting. And there's a celebrity game. Uh, Kevin Hart's not a player anymore. It's pretty funny. He's a funny guy. And now Ty with the NHL. Toronto Maple Leafs captain was Dion Phaneuf was traded to Ottawa Senators in a nine-man deal. And it was including a second-round draft pick for this year from Ottawa. Pretty big trade there. But uh, Martin Brodeur's... Number number thirty was retired by the New Jersey Devils this week. Um, L.A. Kings forward Milan Lucic was given a standing ovation in Boston, and they had a nine to two win. But uh, the reason he was given this ovation was because last year he was traded by the Bruins to the L.A. Kings, and uh, this is his first game back in Boston since the trade. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, and Florida Panthers forward Yarmir Yager is two goals away from tying Brett Hull for the third place record on the all-time list. So that's going to be pretty interesting, and I hope he can hit that mile marker this year. So. Nice. And now Abel with uh, NFL news. Well, folks, the Broncos won 24-10. It was a terrible game. Great game. They did. It was no offense. It was just defense. And that's why Von Miller was voted MVP. He had three sacks, five tackles, and two forced t- fumbles. And one went back for a touchdown. That was right right there, like, fumble, touchdown. It was terrible. Um, what would you think of that game, Ty? I thought it was, uh, it was kind of a slow game for a Super Bowl, but I'm glad to see Manning got his... Uh, championship this year, especially if he's going to be retiring, but he hasn't team. decided on that yet. So that he's now tied with his brother, so people can't say that Eli's better. Um, and in an interview after the game, Cam left because he was pretty upset, and a lot of other players did not like that. How he just walked off and said he was done. It's not good. No good. And Peyton Manning did not. <laughs> Did not reply to the que- the question of retiring after the game. He just talked about how he was going to go hug his wife and kids and drink Budweiser. Lots of Budweiser. Lots. Of, and Von Miller is buying, I tell you what, folks. And there's, I saw this picture. It was of Eli Manning up in one of those fancy booths that the rich people get to sit in during the games. And he had a blank stare after his brother scored. And there was a lot of people saying, like, why, why is he... Is he mad he won? And he replied with he was thinking if they should go for two or just kick the extra point to put him up two or put him up one to like get the 24-10 win. And that's all I got. And Marshawn Lynch is retiring. I don't know if I believe that, though. I think he just wants more money, wants to be at a better team because you don't retire at age 29. What do you think, Ty? I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> okay, true, true. That's that's all, folks. Bye. Today on the Poncho Show, we have Mr. Oland, and he's going to be answering some questions about the new co-op. So, can you tell us when it was first finalized? Because I know there's a lot of talk for a while. Uh, the co-op was talked about at the January board meeting here in Rossalt, and the board did vote to go ahead with the co-op. And with the details to be worked out by the Tri-State Co-op Board, there's a separate board set up for uh, Tri-State that only covered football before, but now their duties will be expanded. Uh, On the 27th of January, the Tri-State Board accepted the uh, conditions that the Rossalt Board wanted to bring forth to that, and they said that we can move forward forward with that. After that, they sent the application to the state, and we won't hear back from them until March, but uh, for the most part, I think the state will approve the uh, co-op contract. 
And which sports will be added besides the football that's already in place? Volleyball and boys and girls basketball. So will the addition of track and cross country come later, or for now are they just going to stay separate for a while? That will come later, possibly. Uh, there's a lot a lot of other logistics that need to be uh, looked at with that. They are in a co-op with some other towns up there. So to get it to, to happen, say even this spring, we couldn't do that. Uh, as far as next spring goes, it, it's still up in the air. And with the addition of other schools, will we be able to add any more sports, or is it just going to be the sports that have always been offered here at Rosselt? Uh, hopefully we can we can add some other things like, say, golf or softball or baseball we've had in the past. Hopefully that is a, an option. Also, the Fairmont School contacted us this year, and they are going to or they invited us to come up there and do trap shooting. And they figure that's going to be a sport in North Dakota soon, a high school sport as well. So it should open up some more opportunities. And how will the eligibility requirements work? I know now it's um, just based on whether you're failing or anything, but will that change in the future to see who can participate in anything? Yes, the Tri-State Board has already started looking at some policy things, and it was decided that the policies would be consistent between all three schools. So they're going to look at what all three schools do and then pick the best one going forward for all three. And how will practices be managed and games split up and all of the things that happen between the towns? Uh, practices are probably going to be the hardest part to schedule because we are going to have to do some more busing. Uh, football works out pretty well. Uh, they've got all of the details ironed out with that. And now we have to figure out which gyms and, and which bus drivers and which coaches can, can go to those practices. So that will probably be the most difficult part of the whole process. And what about the games? Because I've heard talk of us having more or it being split up. I don't exactly know how that's going to work. Uh, as of right now, we were looking at some games volleyball. It would be half of the games in Rossalt and half of them in uh, Fairmont Campbell Tinta, and they would be able to split those games that they get however they want. For basketball, both boys and girls, we did get a few more games. Uh, I think for boys basketball next year, we're going to have seven of the ten home games in Rossalt, and in girls basketball, six of the nine home games in Rossalt. And then I know because it's between three different states, it's going to be a little different with us having more players and we would have to move up a class if we stayed here. So how is it going to be split up now? Uh, we're going to compete in North Dakota, which we would stay in Class B. We would be in Region 1 in North Dakota. Uh, as of right now, we've still been able to schedule all of the conference teams in South Dakota and also still play a couple of the Minnesota teams that we play. So we will, we're going to play teams from all three states like we currently do. All right. Well, that's all. So thank you for being on the Poncho Show this week. Thank you. Okay, welcome back to the Outdoors Show. Um, Buffalo had a lot of fish caught over the during the tournament, which was on Saturday, this last Saturday. Um, and here are some of the fish that were placed in first. Longest walleye was 22 inches. Longest northern was 30 and a 30 and a quarter inches. Longest perch was nine and seven eighths long. And then longest fish, which was in the other category, was a 13 inch bullhead that I caught off of a tip up. Um, some of the perch have been having l like little yellow worms in them when we have been playing them. So just be aware if you do catch a nice one that. Um, we have been finding some nice worms, so we're just going to start letting them go. Um, most of the fish that we've been catching have been on tip-ups. Um, some of the smaller fish, yeah, we've been catching on rods, but if you're going for northerns and bigger fish, I would uh, start using um, tip-ups. Um, Ryan, well, me and my dad um caught 15 perch on friday and saturday we caught um 18 and the longest one we caught was 13 inches um there is a fishing derby on lake elsie this saturday february 13th um prizes are still unknown at this time um there has been one derby that has been canceled due to not enough ice uh, you needed they need 16 inches 
or more, and they only have uh, 10 inches right now. So, so hopefully they can um, have the get the ice build up and have the derby one of these weekends. So uh, get those pitchers in so we can show them on the show. Now it's time for Jokes of the Week, sponsored by Girl Scout Cookies. Um, Girl Scout Cookies, our Mr. Kleindl is going to be selling them for a limited time for his girls, uh, for Girl Scouts. So Four come, bucks a box. Yeah, so come in and get a bunch of boxes. I've been buying some. <laughs> They're pretty good, too. Um, what do you get when you cross a fish lure with a gym sock? I don't know what. A hook, a line, and a stinker. <laughs> <laughs> How do you communicate with a fish? I don't know. Drop it in a line. <laughs> <laughs> what does every fisherman want? What? A girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it for this week's um, Outdoors Channel. Hi, I'm Eric, and this is Abel, and this is a new segment for upcoming video game releases for Xbox One and PS4. And for Xbox One, the first game is called Tron Run, and it's coming out on February 16th. It's a new lightning-fast action-adventure runner set in the world of Tron. Players will blaze through dynamic circuits, facing off against virulent adversaries while taking on all, challenge all challengers. And this game is also on PS4. The next one is Layers of Fear. comes out February 16th. Layers of Fear is a psychedelic horror where you take control over an insane painter in his quest to finish his magnum opus, and it's also on PS4. And the third game on Xbox One, Agatha Christie's The ABC Murderers, is coming out on February 23rd. The ABC Murderers is an adventure and investigation game adapted from the classic Agatha Christie novel. Assume the role of the famous private detective Hercule Poirot, and once again you'll find yourself up against a mysterious serial killer who goes by the name of ABC. And this game is also coming on PS4 as well. Uh, now the PS4 games, and it's going to start out with Far Cry Criminal coming out on the 23rd of February. Uh, Far Cry games typically do well. This game has no cars or guns, which is a big part of what makes Far Cry great. The game is set in the Stone Age, um, putting players in the role of an unarmed hunter who rises to become a leader of a tribe. The game is very in interesting concept, and Ubisoft even had a professional linguist create a historical accurate language specifically for the game, and it is also on Xbox One. And the second game for PS4 is Plants vs. Zombies, Zombies Garden Warfare Number 2. It's coming out on February 23rd. In Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, the zombies have conquered and the plants are on the attack for the first time in this shooter. In your backyard battleground, you can edit your character's abilities and customizations, choose quests, jump into co-op or multiplayer action modes, or invite up to three friends into your backyard to start a party and take an AI. Defeat a wave, and and a more powerful wave will show up. You can also switch teams to challenge your friends. Back, backyard Battleground is your own frontline base to plan your attack before you enter the battle for Zomburbia. And this game is also coming out on Xbox One. The last game is The Escapist, The Walking Dead. It comes out February 16th. Uh, merging the award-winning smash hit indie game, The Escapist, with the worldwide phenomenon that is The Walking Dead comes the escapist the walking dead in this unique game recreated entirely in the charm hi i'm eric and this is abel and this is a new segment for upcoming video game releases for xbox one and ps4 and for xbox one the first game is called tron run and it's coming out on february 16th it's a new lightning fast action adventure runner set in the world of tron players will blaze through dynamic circuits facing off against virulent adversaries while taking on all challenges, all challengers, and this game is also on PS4. The next one is Layers of Fear. Comes out February 16th. Layers of Fear is a psychedelic horror where you take control over an insane painter in his quest to finish his magnum opus, and it's also on PS4. And the third game on Xbox One, Agatha Christie's The ABC Murderers, is coming out on February 23rd. 
the ABC Murders is an adventure and investigation game adapted from the classic Agatha Christie novel, assumed the role of the famous private detective Hercule Poirot, and once again, you'll find yourself up against a mysterious serial killer who goes by the name of ABC, and this game is also coming on PS4 as well. Uh, now the PS4 games, and it's going to start out with Far Cry Criminal coming out on the 23rd of February. Uh, Far Cry games typically do well. This game has no cars or guns, which is a big part of what makes Far Cry great. The game is set in the Stone Age, um, putting players in the role of an unarmed hunter who rises to become a leader of a tribe. The game is very in interesting concept, and Ubisoft even had a professional linguist create a historical accurate language specifically for the game, and it is also on Xbox One. And the second game for PS4 is Plants vs. Zombies, Zombies Garden Warfare Number 2. It's coming out on February 23rd. In Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, the zombies have conquered and the plants are on the attack for the first time in this shooter. In your backyard battleground, you can edit your character's abilities and customizations, choose quests, jump into co-op or multiplayer action modes, or invite up to three friends into your backyard to start a party and take an AI. Defeat a wave, and, and a more powerful wave will show up. You can also switch teams to challenge your friends. Back, backyard Battleground is your own frontline base to plan your attack before you enter the battle for Zomburbia. And this game is also coming out on Xbox One. The last game is The Escapist, The Walking Dead. It comes out February 16th. Uh, merging the award-winning smash hit indie game, The Escapist, with the worldwide phenomenon that is The Walking Dead. Comes the escapist, The Walking Dead. In this unique game, recreated entirely in the charming 8-bit pixel art style of The Escapist, you'll play as Rick Grimes as he takes on a horror zombies let loose upon the world. And that's about it. And those are some upcoming video games for this segment on The Poncho Show. Thank you, and talk to you guys next time. All right, everybody, that ends the second episode of The Poncho Show. This will be our final episode on YouTube. So I hope you enjoyed our new venture. Next week we'll be live streaming again. So it will be on YouTube, but will not be pre-recorded. So come on back next week and see a live show. So, bye. 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 bye.